Hi everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome into my home office. Um, look, it's pretty pretty extraordinary times here in the, here in New Zealand. We have um, literally just gone into the gone into full lockdown mode um, for the next four weeks. So you know, it's it's um, you know it's, it's a bit different. It's a bit different for me. I've I've had to set up my my home office um, as a better re recording studio. I I don't you know I know I know the sound quality is probably not as good as uh, what it what it is in my in my office where I do most of my recordings. But um, look, unfortunately, we're going to have to make do. It's just um, just the reality of the time. Uh, quite an extraordinary time. So look, I know that a lot of you are facing similar things and um, having to figure out how to work from home. Um, I have done it in the past, but you know, I do do it often, um, just being, uh, being my own business, etc. cetera, but, um, recording at home is not something I've done that often. So let's, you know, um, let's see how it goes and hopefully, hopefully you get a lot out of this session. You know, I've got a lot planned. There's a lot I want to go over and there's, um, some, you know, I want it to be like a really broad discussion today, um, or a, a broad education you know, a webinar around like lots of you know great things that you can do in Power BI, and also you know, sort of just talk through my methodology around how I create my own reports and how I create showcase reports, etc. Um, and I think that learning all of those things are going to put you in a really good position if you are working on your own reports. I would say today is sort of more a beginner slash slightly intermediate level, nothing too advanced. You know, I will be covering all aspects of Power BI. Uh, from the query editor, data model, DAX, uh, visualizations, you know, just, just going over, like just broadly talking about all the um, things that I like to do and, and the ways I, the way I like to think about things and implement things in Power BI. And by the end of the session, we're going to have a, you know, a pretty compelling report really. And we're going to do it all within an hour, I would say. We might not do every intricate detail on the report, um, but, uh, you know, most of it, I would say we'll get 90% of the way there. Um, and then you can work and you can, you can very quickly see how you can work on a few touch ups to get it to, to how you, um, how you, you know, how, how you might like to, to, to make things look inside of Power BI. So, um, in terms of how things will run, you know, I'm hoping that this, um, comes through okay on your, on, on your end. I, I, I truly hope that. I hope that, um, you know, the, the, the recording, uh, the, the recording of it, um, the streaming of this uh, stacks up um, across across every off, across the internet. Also, in advance, I apologize for any noises that might be coming from my home because I have um, uh, a almost three year old who is running around um, playing on his toys and you know doing all that sort of stuff. So um, you know having to deal with that and also have a relatively newborn, only six weeks old. So um, might might hear might hear some um, some noises there too. So hopefully we can get through an hour without um, too too much disruption. Um, and you know if it goes well, well look, we'll, we'll, this might this might be a good opportunity to do more of this. So um, so we'll just see how it going. You know I I have been thinking about hey let's just live stream more. Um, you know as as everyone's at home. So you know interested to hear your feedback. Check it in, um, put it in the chat and and um, you know I'll see what we can do. You know, we, we, we might have to sort of reprioritize some of the things that we were working on at Enterprise DNA. Um, so look, a lot going on at Enterprise DNA. So before we kick into this, you know, definitely check out um, our blog where we put a lot of announcements, um, you know, our YouTube channel where we announce a lot of things, but we're doing so many cool things around um, content and applications we're developing. So really want you to check those all out. Um, you know, there's the DAX guide, there's our, our chatbot in the 1.0. Um, and we've got some other things in the pipeline as well, which are super exciting. So definitely want to get those um, get those out to you. In terms of today, you know, again, I like to focus on uh, really focus on the content during these sessions. So I will be doing that. Um, and definitely, if you've got any questions though, or you need some assistance on something that we're talking about, um, put it in the chat, and the team um, will hopefully be on here as well. And they can they can help us out. I'm sure they will be. So um, yeah. So look, that's about it. I think. Let's all um, yeah. Let's 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 get through it together, and um, let's hope um, we can we can make um, these these sessions a success, even though we're in a slightly different environment. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to my screen, and um, hey, let's jump into it. One second. OK, 
Okay, well, let's jump into it. So I've just got up my a Power BI uh, file here, and we're going to build this out. We're going to, as, as mentioned, just cover a lot of uh, things around just effective reporting in Power BI. In terms of what we're going to look to build, we're going to, we're going to, I'm just, I just jumped to the, the Power BI showcase earlier to just um, highlight that this is a great place to look for inspiration, by the way. You know, if you're looking to learn a bit more about what you can do from a design perspective and what's even possible with with, um, with Power BI, I would highly recommend checking out the Enterprise DNA Showcase. We've got the most comprehensive showcase anywhere. Um, and we, well, in particular myself, I put a lot of emphasis on making things look good. In terms of what we're going to look to build today, and we're going to um, try to get through it within within the next sort of hour or so, is we're going to look to build something that looks like this. So this is actually an existing showcase that we have that you can actually have a play around with. And we're going to basically rebuild it. And I'm going to cover, because um, I know a lot of you, um, you know, have probably have maybe seen this dashboard, but haven't actually seen how it was actually developed. And so we're going to really dive into it. And you can just see that this is actually very achievable, which is, which is the exciting thing, right? It's so achievable. Um, and we're going to develop something just like it. We might not, it might not be exactly like this, but we're going to try to get as close to this as possible. We might have some slightly different colors, etc. but that's okay. You know, this is, this is, this is basically what we're going to aim for. And this is, and you're going to learn how, you know, how, how you can make it actually happen. Okay. Um, so let's do it. Let's, let's dive in. So I'm in my um, Power BI file. I'm going to go to transform data um, because I have to bring in that data. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna whiz through this a little bit, um, and I'm gonna go new source Excel. So you should have access to this file as well. So I'm gonna double click on that, um, and it will all, it should all be set up for us to utilize. So up will pop up a pop up box. I'm gonna grab all of the uh, key tables that I've set up. So you see how I've got all the key tables. So I'm just gonna grab these, and I'm gonna bring them in. And then there's one table that we're obviously missing, and that's the date table, right? So I'm just going to quickly get that as well, and so you'll have that in your resource pack also. So just give me one second, and I'll get that up. Um, the date table code, by the way, is made available in a number of different areas um, through Enterprise DNA. You can get access to it in the Ultimate Beginner's Guide as well, if you want to jump into that, or the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to DAX as well. Um, that's just on our portal. So I'm just going to copy all this code here and then I'm going to go and go new source here, blank query, and then go to the advanced editor. And once you know what you're doing here, you can do it very, very quickly. And then I'm just going to pop in some dates here, uh, 2017 to, let's go 31st of 12, 2022. So just a big date range. You can also make this dynamic recently put out a video around how you can actually do that um, with some just adjustment to the code. So definitely check that out on our YouTube channel. And then I'm just gonna go invoke. Okay, so just need to tidy up a few things here. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Um, usually, you know, I, I'm big on making sure that uh, you have everything set up here from a naming perspective, uh, etc. And so, but you know, uh, that's for another day. This is just me quickly tidying things up here to make our lives a little bit easier um, down the track. And so I also would just group these. You know, look, you can do this so quickly. Like once you get the hang of it, and once you get the hang of my best practices here, which I which I really um, go into in quite a bit of detail um, in the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Power BI, if you want to check that out. It's uh, for, 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 for totally free access. Um, so what I can do here is uh, parameter query. I just, just group it. So I'm just going to go parameter query. And then I'm going to also highlight all of these just by holding down shift and I'm going to call this the data model. So this, this is all I'm going to do basically. This is all I, I think I need to do here. Um, you know, I've got my core model now and I've got my, I've just sorted it just a little bit in here and then I can just go close and apply. Okay. So this is the, that's the, that's the abbreviated version of, you know, the, the query editor, but I definitely want you to d dive into that a lot more, but I want to spend more time on the front end here, talk about uh, DAX calculations and some visualizations ideas. So that, 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 that's predominantly what I want to focus on. 
and I'm gonna um, we're gonna try and rebuild. You know the um, the uh, the showcase model that I sh- that I showed you before. And we're gonna obviously when I created that, I created it with the old style of Power BI. Like Power BI looked very different, and so it's good to do a bit of a refresh here with all the new functionality that we have inside of inside of Power BI. Okay, so we're gonna jump to the modeling era because we now have to model up our data, right? And so these relationships are totally wrong, so I'm just gonna to delete them. This one looks like it's okay, probably. Yep, okay, cool. So now we're gonna follow my best practice here where we're gonna try to build a waterfall of filters, right? And so I'm just gonna rearrange these so that I've got my lookup tables up the top and fat tables down the bottom. Right, and I'm just gonna just make this look a little bit neater. Because what you're trying to do here, right, and this is the best practice for me, is of course the, the main thing you're trying to do here is just to try and represent the data model. That's the absolute key thing. You're representing the data model. You're not having to really look at the inner, you know, every single column and every single table because you can do that in here. You can do that by clicking through in this area here where you can view the different, um, I'll just zoom in for you, you know, you can view the different columns and the data in the columns here. This is just so you can get a visual representation in your mind in terms of what's actually going on in the data model here, okay? So what we got? We got products index, so I'm gonna drag that over to the product description index. And then I've got some dates, I'll just drag that. Um, we're gonna do it by order date today. So by order date, and then I'm gonna go in here and I've got, and I've got actually got an index here in the um, Aussie region, so and then I'm going to drag it to the delivery region index because that's what's related there. Okay, so I've got my simple data model. I don't have anything else here, so I can, you know, there's nothing else for me to um, view. I've just built everything as my core model. This will grow, obviously. You know, the, the, there will be a lot more detail in here in time, especially with great measure groups, etc. Maybe some supporting um, tables and, uh, and things like that. But at the moment, you know, your core model can be this simple and still be very, very effective. You can still get great reporting out of it. Okay, so in a matter of five to six minutes, uh, we've covered off two very important parts of Power BI. Um, parts that you cannot overlook. Uh, but if you set those up well, and and I'm not you know kidding you here, that you can actually set them up pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. You know, you can already be jumping into this side of Power BI, the front end, where you need to write, you know, run your analysis and um, create your visualizations, etc. Okay, and that's and that's what we're going to focus on. That's what I want to really focus on the most. Okay, so when I get in here, the first thing I do inside of Power BI is I think, okay, what are my what are my core calculations that I might want to analyze, right? So think of things like, what would an organization which is selling something, what would they care about? They would care about, say, revenue, for example. They would, they might care about the amount of transactions they do. They would care about, you know, think about, this is broad thinking, right? The, the, the quantity of goods that they're selling. The, these are the, the broad, broad core calculations that you would want to analyze right don't worry too much about um you know you want to analyze revenue by customer at this stage think, but think more broadly what are some simple calculations we could do to get some quick wins inside of our uh, you know the analysis that we're doing within power bi okay and i can already think of a few right i mean the, the most obvious one here is you know total revenue we could count that up We've got um, total cost potentially because we've got order quantity and unit cost. So we could utilize an iterating function there. We've got order quantity, so we could sum up that. We've also got amount of transactions, so we could count up each row on the table using count rows. So already in my mind, I've got four that we can just start off with really, really quickly, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, and that's how I want you to think as well. I don't want you to get too far down sort of one rabbit hole before you just set up your 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 model effectively that will ultimately make your life so much easier down the line, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create a measure group. And to do that, we're gonna go into data, okay? So look, I know some of you might be thinking that we're, we're, we're moving quite quickly here and we're, we're glancing over a few things, but you know, this the idea behind this uh, particular uh, session is really to cover off you know, how you can build from scratch something you know, within an hour. So you know, I know I've mentioned that, but 
you know, I just want to re- reiterate it. And so hopefully, you know, as we get to the end of this, you'll, you'll, you'll start to realize or, or even be sort of inspired in terms of what you can achieve and how quickly you can achieve it. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a brand new sort of dummy table and I'm going to call it key meetings. I always start with this because it's just, um, you know, something generic, something that can fit into you know, anyone's model. Um, and, it, and it reminds me that I need to create my core calcs within this one. Okay, so I've got my key measures here and I'm going to click in, click in and I'm going to create a measure. Okay, so I'm going to go to new measure and I'm going to call this one total sales. To start off really, really simple and what do we need to do? All we need to do is sum up the revenue column, right? That's all we need to do, nothing too difficult uh, and I'm just going to enter that and then all of a sudden we've got some calcs that can be doing something for us, right? We can, um, you know, go grab our customer name field and we've already got calculations happening very, very fast. Okay. I'm just going to tidy up this area here. I'm going to get rid of this column. And then I'm going to click that in, click that out. And then now I have my key measures here. Okay. And I know that it's a measure group now because I've got the calculator. Okay, so let's keep going, let's keep going. Let's just quickly get these ones on board, right? Uh, some quick wins, total quantity. Another really, really simple one, right? Sum of the quantity column, okay? Again, simple stuff, nothing difficult. Let's create another one. And you should always be doing this. Before you do it, create any uh, visualizations, just, just, just get these done really, really quickly. And I'm gonna call this one total transactions, okay? And I'm going to use a function called count rows. Okay. And all I've got to do is I'm going to put the sales table here because this sales table has a transaction in every single row of it. And so I can quickly calculate total transactions. And you could also check these as you are doing them. So I could just create a table here, right? And I could drag in total transactions, total quantity, you know, and I'm seeing results pretty, you know, pretty quickly. And these are all happening because of the quality data model that we have here, right? We've got a data model which is simple and effective. It's making these um, calculations very, 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 very simple and easy. Okay, let's do something a little bit, a tiny bit trickier and work out what our total costs are, right? When we look at this table, what do you think we need to do from a formula perspective? What type of formula do we need to actually get this to work? We've got our order quantity column and we've got our total unit cost column, right? Hopefully you're thinking iterating functions. Okay, we need to utilize an iterating function to be able to calculate total cost because we don't want to be calculate uh, by we don't want to be creating a calculated column here at all. Okay, you know you know how much I dislike calculated columns, especially in fact tables. Um, you know we don't want it. We want to be able to utilize um, DAX measures, virtual calculations with DAX to actually get these calculations. Okay. And it's not difficult if you know what an iterative function is. Okay, so let's go to total costs. And here I'm going to use sum x. Okay, I might even go down to another line here using shift enter. So I might go sum x, the sales table, and then I've got an expression to write here. So what do I want to happen at every single row? And that's what you want to think here, right? And what I want to happen in every single row is I want the order quantity to be multiplied by our total unit cost, okay? And it's gonna do that at every single row and then at the end, it's gonna sum up all of those values that it's calculated with every single row, okay? And that is at its core what an iterating function does for us. Okay, so now I've got my total costs. And let's just think further, what, what else can we do? What else can we do? Well, very quickly, you know, we can, ca- we can start branching out here. We can start branching out. We can calculate uh, total profits, for example, because we've got total sales minus total costs. So let's do it again. Let's create another measure really quickly. And you know, we're, we're doing this, we're, we're, we're I'm showcasing here how quickly you can do this too. And, and this doesn't have to be, you know, exactly the same scenario. It can be very different and that's absolutely fine. But the same core things apply here. The same methodology applies. So I'm gonna go total sales minus total costs. Ah, and I see my, my measures actually appeared in the wrong table here, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to go up here, and you see here this home table. 
Let's see if I can zoom in here for you. Sorry, I've been zooming in. I should have. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get onto that. So we've got home table here, and I can change this to key measures very easily. Right, and so now we have our total profits here. Okay, and then I can drag that in here, and now I have a range of different um, calcs, all happening very, very quickly, and I can filter these in many different ways. I think we can probably do one more, so let's come up here, and I'll go profit margins. It's another really simple one that I, 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 I like to demo, so we'll go divide, um, what we've got here, total profits, by total sales. And we'll put a zero as the alternative result here. Okay, and then we do need to change this. We do need to change this to a percentage. And then do we really need two? Let's just go to the one. One decimal point. Okay, so now we have our profit margins as well. Okay, so in a matter of minutes. Look how many measures we've created. We've created six and, and we're literally only just starting here, okay? And so what we can do from here is we can already start creating some visualizations just out of these, okay? So I think, why don't we do that? Why don't, why don't we actually do that and, and start building out our report? There's still a lot of other things that we, we're going to do. Um, but, you know, at least we can get started with, it, with, with, these, with these calculations that we've currently got. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to have a look at our sales by city, okay? So I'm going to grab my city. I know that my filtering is going to work because of the relationship that we have in here. So we've got a relationship between the city index, basically, and our deliver region index. So that's, a, that's actually a, a true relationship in, uh, within the demo data set that we have, okay? And uh, it does look like summer here in North America, which is a bit uh, a bit frustrating, but that's okay. Um, we, we can get rid of those. So what I'll do here is I will grab my total sales and I'm going to turn it into, because it doesn't really matter when we have it in this, it's more so um, when you have it in the, uh, the map of visualization, but here we're getting the actual city name, so that's absolutely fine. Okay, so now we have all of the cities and all of their sales, okay? We haven't put any date filters on or anything like that. This is just basically from the beginning of time, okay? And so I think that's probably a good idea. Let's here create some date slices, okay? Because you always want to, you know, looking at every single data point from the beginning of time doesn't always make sense. You know, you want to really drill into different time periods. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to utilize the year. I think we do have a year. We've got a year column down the bottom here. So year here. And so I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to create a slicer out of it. So you see here we've got a slicer. Let's click on that. And then I'm going to make a few adjustments here because I want this to be, first of all, a horizontal slicer. Okay. And I want this to be flat like that. I also don't want the header because I think it's pretty. I, I usually don't have headers if it's quite obvious what it is. And so I'm not going to have a header there. Um, I'm also going to filter the date range a little bit here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the year and I think we'll do a filter on all pages, right? And I'll just make it these three years here. That's all I really care about, okay? And then I can adjust this a little bit more. So now I can actually click between, I can click between different years and see how that changes my thing. So it's pretty, it always amazes me how cool that is, you know, in terms of what you can do, you know, filtering wise, you know, the, the, the formula that we have in here, if you think about it, is super simple. I mean, it's not complicated at all, but think about already how many different cuts we can basically get. It's pretty, pretty phenomenal. Okay, so now we've done that. I want to also analyze by quarter. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at our date table here. I think we need to add something to, to here. So what we have in our date table is we have quarter in calendar, right? Not the best name, to be honest, but what we need is we need to actually 
just I want to I want to be able to select by year, but then select by quarter. And so I need to somehow break out this quarter thing, uh, this quarter part of this column. So what I'm going to do to do that, instead of creating a calculated column, I'm going to jump back into the query editor really quickly. Okay, and I'm going to click on dates. I'm going to come over to this add column um, ribbon. And I'm going to use this feature called column from examples, which I just love. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, um, let's have a look, what quarter are we actually here? So quarter one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in quarter one. And it basically fills, it guesses, it basically guesses what I need. Okay. And then I'm going to put quarters in here and then I'll go, okay. Okay. So now within my date table here, I have a quarters column and then I can just go close and apply. And this will just update for me very, very quickly, hopefully. Yep, okay, so now we see quarters in our table by itself. And what I'm gonna do, just speed this up, I'm gonna go copy paste, get another one of these, right? And then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna find quarters and I'm gonna drag it into that field. Um, let's try that again. Um, okay, let's do it again. Can we do that? Cool. Okay, so let's just play around with these a little bit. Okay, so now I can do not only year, but I can also do quarter. And what I want to do is maybe actually make this multi-select as well in terms of quarters. So I don't want that on control. I want to be able to select it like that. Okay, we can also make these a little bit smaller, I think, as well. Like they don't just, you know, they are pretty easy to select even if they're a little bit smaller. So just some small adjustments there. And now we have a very simple way to filter by that. Okay, cool. So already got some things going there. What else can we do? We can do in terms of that example, I can quickly see that we can create something by date here. Now the date always annoys me a little bit because I want, I don't want the hierarchy. I want the actual date. And so I'm going to just flick that to date like so. And I'm going to look at um, our, let's have a look at our profits through time. I'm going to drag profits in there. So now I've got dates and profits. And I'm going to change it to this visualization here. Okay. And then I can very quickly or very easily just place this down in this little corner here. And I think that looks pretty nice um, in terms of short term. You know, it gets a little bit busy when you're like this, right? But short term, um, when you're looking at only a specific um, like quarterly time frame, you know, it provides enough detail in terms of what we need. Okay, so a couple of other uh, visualizations I think we can do relatively quickly here is we've got sales where we got, we've got our, um, we've got our warehouse. So we can go warehouse. And I'm going to put in, in my warehouse, I'm going to look at my um, quantity. Okay, I'm going to look at my quantity because that's sort of things that we might want to look at from a warehouse perspective, like how, how busy our warehouses are. And I want to change around how this visualization looks actually. A lot of the sort of preset ways that visualizations um, are set up now are very, are very are actually very different to they were historically. Um, I don't like all of them to be honest, but it's not the end of the world. It's very easy to fix it up. So I can go and find um, that. And I think that looks all right. Sort of quantity by warehouse code. And yeah, I think that gives us all the information we need. We can maybe make this a little bit bigger. Then up here, I want to put, um, we've got some channel information as well. So I'm going to grab my channel like so. And I think also we can we can quickly set up something here around our products. So maybe we want to have a look at our products um, and we want to have a look at our sales of our products. Like so to be able to rank them from high to low over a certain time frame. So I'm quickly just throwing things together and you, you'll see here that I'm always using I'm always using my measures. Right. And I, I want you to do the same. I don't want you to 
to ever go and grab a column from your fact table. You want to always be utilizing measures. And if you set things up like this, it's 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 so seamless, isn't it? So seamless to do that. Okay, so I want to do a couple other things here, okay? And I want to, and, you know, um, you know, to summarize, I want to create some cumulative totals and I want to create uh, some moving averages, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick bit of setup here. And this is exactly what I would do if I, if I was doing something, you know, for real, if I was doing some client engagements or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a new group called cumulative totals, okay? And I'm going to create these really, really um, relatively quickly. And I'm going to create another one here called, um, I'm going to create another measure group here called time comparison. Because you, if you know me well, I talk a lot about measure branching, right? And when you do this measure branching, you've got to, you've got to make sure you segment your measures into appropriate groups. So it's very easy to locate these particular um, measures once you once you're done with them. Okay, and I'm going to create another one here. You don't want to just plant them all in the same measure group like key measures. Okay, and I'm going to create another one here called moving averages. And then I'm going to quickly create some measures within each of one of these. Uh, and then we can turn them into measure groups as well. So I'm just going to go new measure here, new measure. Um, I'm going to go sales, so we'll call this sales last year, calculate, total sales, date add, dates, um, yeah, date add, do I need any more? That should be fine. What am I doing? Sorry, <laughs> I need to put a lot more. I was just thinking I had the same period last year uh, function in there. Um, okay, so that's that's date add. And then now I've got my sales last year here. So then what I can do is I can delete this column. So this is just me working through this very quickly. So now I have time comparison up there. Now I wanna do a cumulative total. And so you can, if you really, if you want, certainly copy and paste these from other models. You know, there's 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 some very much quicker ways um, that you can possibly do this. Um, but I can write it out pretty quickly. So um, just from memory. So I just do that, and I think it's good from a demo perspective just to sort of walk through it. So a lot of these I use all the time. So I just know, you know, in the back of my mind. How they how they are going to operate, you know, and that's sort of half the battle with Power BI is that you you need to sort of get yourself into a place where you can intuitively know what's going to happen when you do these, right? And so, but there's a lot of these formula combinations, a lot of these patterns you can reuse over and over again. And so, you know, once you know them, you know, you can really the speed with which you can do some interesting calcs is, is quite phenomenal. Okay, so I've got cumulative totals there as well now. So you'll see. Um, uh, you'll see that there now. So I want to create moving uh, something to do with a moving average. So I'm going to create another measure here, and we're going to call this sales moving average 30 day. Okay, and we're going to use average x here, um, and we'll create dates and period dates. Start date is last date. And we'll go 30 days. Go total sales. So we're going to reuse these in a second, very very quickly to, to create some other calculations. But let's just let's just confirm this as a measure group. So I, I've covered a lot of these in other um, content areas, right? Um, you know, they're in the portal and a number of different modules they're they're on they're on our blog they're on our YouTube channel so so definitely check um, check out you know more specifics around what you want also maybe check out our chatbot Edna 1.0 you know you can ask ask her anything and she'll point you in the right direction so you know maybe I'll do a bit of a demo at the end we'll see if we've got time so but now I've got these these calcs here now without 
you know, showing you these, bef- you know, before I sh- go and show you what these actually um, are calculating, I know there's a few other things that I can calculate pretty quickly here. And so I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this particular formula pattern. Then I'm going to go new measure. And I'm going to go paste it in and I'm going to go to sales last year. And because I've already created that sales last year, I'm going to just change this to sales last year. And now I've got my cumulative sales last year, just like that. Okay, then I can also do the same here, moving averages. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy this, right? Then I'm going to go new measure. Sorry about that noise. Uh, That didn't work, did it? Okay, one second. Okay, now, um, so now I've got sales here. So instead of sales, I'm going to go profits and I'm just going to change this over to profits, right? So I'm going to put total profits in there instead. Okay, and then push enter. And then I'm going to immediately create another measure. This is this is this is the this is with you know hopefully you're seeing my methodology here right and how quickly I can create I can create things margins and I'm going to put in here remember we created our profit margin and I'm going to go enter and see how quickly I created all these things it's just it is it is pretty pretty cool if you if you can pick up on how I'm doing things here right like I don't. I can just create things um, so much faster than everyone else by just you know utilizing copy and paste and and following this measure branching methodology. Okay, so now we we we've got a pretty clean field section here. Now we know what's a measure group and what isn't. One thing that we could also do in the background here is come into our model and just you know make arrange these a little bit a little bit better. I don't really, you know, again, I don't really mind what's in here. I just need to represent these as something. And for my measured groups, I like to put them out to the side here. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got some cumulative totals. And so what we can do is we can create a cumulative total visualization. And that's what I want to put down here. And so what I can do, I can just drag this down here. I want to get rid of that hierarchy again. I just want it by date. And then I'm going to grab my cumulative sales and compare that to my sales last year. And then I'm just going to turn it into um, this. Aha, but something's not right. Something is not right. I think, let's actually put this as dates. Let's just see if that changes it. Um, let's, okay. Okay, this is a perfect example of what you would do when you don't really know what's going on, which is, to be honest, what it, what what is actually happening right now. Change it into a table, okay? Change it into a table so that you can actually see the results, okay? So that you can actually see what is going on. Like, why are these results all like this? That's interesting, right? Why are they all like that? Probably, to be honest, probably because of the actual... Um, measure which is feeding into them. So let's have a look, time comparison. Let's also have a look at this particular um, calculation in here and see, you know, is it calculating it up correctly? Okay. So some, unless there is no um, sales the previous year, no, something is definitely wrong. Uh, maybe, maybe I need to change this to date as well. So let's just have a look. Okay, so what's going on? So we've got total sales. Ah, oh, three. Okay. Sorry, some of you might have already put that up earlier, but that's just that's just silly me. Um, so that should only be one, right? Obviously. Okay, so mystery solved, but hopefully a good lesson. You know, if you don't know what's going on with your results, which is very, very common, you know, and you can do things like like I just did. I just put the wrong um, input in there and I didn't realize. You know, so 
um, all you can do, all you have to do is change it, change it back. And then now we have some cumulative total calculations. Probably want to change the title here um, because of the way that it's you know represented there. I don't really like that, but you know, we can really dive into you know some specific um, cities here and see how they're performing, you know, this this time period versus the same period last year. So some really, really interesting insights that can be found pretty effectively. Okay. So what else can we do here? Let's let's try and represent some trends. Okay, let's have a look at some trends that we might want to analyze. Okay, and this is where you know I certainly feel moving averages really come in, because what you can do is uh, you know what what you'll find with um, like sort of daily information is that it's too granular. There's too there's too it's too busy. So if you have a look down here, you know it's good to see here, you know because you can see every single day, but. Um, when you want to sort of see a trend, it's it's a bit more difficult. You know, it's easier to see trends in something like a cumulative total, isn't it? If you're doing a comparison. But what if you just want to see an underlying trend, you know, say in your sales or your profits or your costs or your margins or whatever. That's where moving averages can really come in. Okay. And so again, I'm going to get rid of the hierarchy. I want a line chart here and I'm going to put my sales in here. Okay. So if I say make this a little bit smaller, you know, we are actually representing a trend a little bit more effectively here. And then what else I would do, what else I would do in this particular case, I'm going to get rid of the axes because I don't really care about, you know, what's going on within, you know, what, what the actual, I can see um, overall what the time frame is here. I don't need the actual granular detail. And I can also get rid of these axes titles as well, which they automatically put put in now, which I I, to be honest, don't really love, but um, that's what they've decided to do. And um, I'll leave the title in for now, but we could adjust We could adjust that, and I certainly have done that in the demo model as well. And then I'm just going to create some different visualizations along here. Okay, and then I'm going to just change my input here. I'm going to put my profits, and I'm going to put my margins. Okay. And we could actually make this even smaller because what I've done in the demo is I like to highlight key information a little bit better. So we could come in through here and then potentially this is what we could do. We could um, come and grab some information out of here and make some cards out of it. So this, these numbers are way too big. So what we want to do Let's have a play around in here. Maybe I won't spend because I think we're 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 going. I mean, we're we're covering a lot of ground here. Um. um so yeah, obviously we're. I don't want to do information too too much information overload. But you know, what we could do. I'll show you as much as I think I possibly can. And sorry, I really apologize if you're hearing my son in the background. <laughs> this is this is one of the things we have to deal with when we're stuck at home and we can't, um, you know, we can't uh, we can't go to work. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you um, you uh, yeah, you know those are, those who are tuning in can understand. Um, okay, uh, so it's a busy it's a busy household at the moment uh, at my place. Uh, so okay, we've got. Maybe we're going to have to do some further adjusting here. You know, get rid of the titles, etc. But let's just see if we can work something up, and we can play around a little bit later. Okay, so put my profits in there, and um, maybe I need to make the side a little bit tighter, actually. Um, so I might, I might do that. Okay, cool. So we've got nearly everything. We've got nearly everything. One other thing I want to add is a, is a shape map. Okay, so we've got our shape map here. So I'm going to click on that, and what you can do here is you can actually find um, um, maybe I actually need to put something in it first. So I'm going to put some sales sales in it, and then what you need to do here, yeah. So I put something in it, and then what you can do here is you can actually find the. There's only a few, but I'm going to look for Australia, right? And then within Australia, I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do it by the location. So let's have a look. So within my AU regions table, I've got territory. So I'm just going to put that into location. And you see it matches out. So it actually figures out, okay, well, this is the specific territory. 
I'm going to get rid of this title definitely here um, and then move that into place here and I think what I'll also do is can I make the background let's have a look can we make the background transparent yes we can okay so we're going to make the background transparent so that they can sort of sit over this visualization here Okay, so it's look, it's slowly coming together here. And remember, we have all this great functionality, if you think about it, that we can still utilize in terms of filtering, etc. You know, the other thing we can do here is we can insert a title, which is very, very important. So um, what do we got here? A text box. So let's call this manage like call this one management insights. Okay. And we'll increase the size a little bit. Um, we'll go can we go to 32 maybe a little bit too big so we'll change this one to I like to sometimes go with aerial black for these okay cool so I think that's about it from a analysis perspective now what we need to do is we need to we need to make our visualization look a little bit better, don't we? We need to improve our visualization quite 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 a, quite a bit. So you know we can um, get rid of a few of those the, those field sections, filter sections, and now have a bit more of a play around with our visualization. You know, get our colors correct, get our um, theme. You know, get our colors um, up in, a, in, a, in a theme that we like. Um, so let's let's just cover this. Let's just cover this for the next sort of 10 minutes. I'll talk through some of my best practices and let's see how far we get. Let's see how far we actually get here um, around, you know, what we can um, what, and what we can do. I think we can achieve a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select, I'm going to go with the blue today. I'm going to go with this, this thing here. I'm going to go storm. We'll see what happens with the colors. So not too bad, not too bad. Then what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to I'm going to actually get rid of all of the titles here, okay? Because I want to create my own titles. Actually, I want to create them in a design that I prefer rather than what sort of the visualization is is showcasing to me. It's a little bit of additional work, but nothing too horrendous, right? Um, so I can multi-select um, visualizations which have a similar which are a similar visual. And I'm just going to quickly click around. So basically what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the visual and I'm getting rid of the title, right? Because I'm going to, I'm going to just simplify these a little bit and make them look how, how I sort of want them to look. Okay. And I'm also going to try sort out this um, area. So what I want to do is I want to make these a little bit smaller. You know what also I really don't like, and, and Microsoft probably don't like me saying this, is I really don't like the titles on these um, axes. Never never needed them and still don't need them now. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of these. Luckily I don't have too many of these. You know, it's pretty obvious. You, you've got to make it obvious what you're showcasing. You know, if you need a, if you need a title to showcase an axis, you know, I don't, I don't mind the idea that they, they have these just to make, just making them automatic is a bit silly in my view. Maybe you disagree, but uh, that's just how I feel. So I'm just going to go around and get rid of these. Okay, I think we're back on track. Okay, let's um, also push these in a little bit. These need to be actually even smaller. Maybe I can, I can get make these. Do um, so you see? I'm, I'm using the axis a lot, uh, just to not the axis. I'm using the um, the formatter area to fix a lot of these up, which is which is not difficult. It's just a matter of just having a play around. You might also want to have a um, a look at some of the sort of visualization videos I have we have on YouTube and uh, and also uh, content on our blog as well because they cover a lot of um, sort of best practices in different environments as well so that's that's something to have a have a quick look at after this after the session finishes or after you've view, viewed this particular session okay so I think that's looking a little bit better now and I can start to see I can start seeing how this might take shape and also how I can fit these in right so I can fit these in a little bit easier um, I'm gonna make these even smaller here actually so let's let's put this down to 10 and data label we'll put down even further. Cool.
cool. One other thing I realized that we should probably do is we should format, and we didn't do this, we should format these measures. It's very easy to do. You know, all you have to do is literally come up to the measure tools area once you've clicked on a particular measure. Um, you know, we did that for the profit margins, but you know, we obviously want to clear it up uh, within here as well. Okay, so, you know, one thing we could possibly do is we could overlay these a little bit. Um, you know, we could make sure that all of these are, say, let's say, let's make them all transparent. They're background transparent. Okay. And so, this looks like sales and profits for us are pretty, um, pretty similar in terms of the trend. Because you've got to remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, we're trying to identify the trends, right? So we're trying to not get too caught up in, you know, the day to day. We're trying to investigate, okay, what's actually happening with the overall trend. And you see, you see here margins um, is a little bit different. And if we say select something else here, you'll see that that trend will will, will adjust as well. Okay. So I'll make this a little bit smaller here. Mm. Okay, so now already starting to take shape quite effectively here, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to really flip the colors. I'm really really going to go for it, go for it here from a color perspective. I'm going to change this background into a, into a much darker blue. Okay, right? And I'm going to make it fully transparent, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, before I'm going to create a, and I like to do this, I really like to use colors a lot, if you didn't if you didn't notice already um, from looking at the, uh, the showcase, the showcases that we create. In my view, colors make just such a huge difference. That's why themes are so important, but also colors in your reports are, are very, very important. You know, they make things stand out, just like a PowerPoint presentation. They really make things stand out, okay? So what I would do here is I'm gonna also make this a slightly lighter shade um, of, that same, of that same sort of uh, color, okay? So I'm gonna go for this here. Uh, no, don't like that so much. Let's go for this one. No, don't like that either. Let's find one that I do like. No, it's too, too much. I think that's probably okay. So let's let's have a look. We can always change it once it, once we go on. So I'm also going to get rid of this line. So you see here, I'm going to get rid of this line. And then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to push this to the back. So I click on it, and then I'm going to say center back. Right. Then what I need to do is I need to make all of these backgrounds. Um, uh, what do I need to do here? I need to make them more transparent. Yes, okay. So I can click on similar visualizations here. There's certainly more we need to do here. Certainly more we, we can do. Um, we can make them all transparent so that we actually see through. Now the one other thing you need to do is we need to change the data labels, right? If you have really dark colors, what you wanna do is you wanna make the actual um, values white so that they stand out okay so i'm just going to go through and do some of these okay and you'll find like as i get through all of these if i get as i get through all of these you'll see that things will start to really stand out a lot more when you utilize that contrast and that that's something that i've discovered and and really i've just copied off you know good powerpoint presentations i've seen to be honest um you know that's how i that's how i've generally done it and so what i can do here is i can um, change this color as well and I'll change these two so look it's a little bit of additional work but I think what you'll find though is it really makes things stand out a lot more um, so you've, you've got to I guess come to sort of a um, you know a place that you're comfortable with um, you know the quicker you do that you know, you know the, the, the better obviously but you know from my perspective this is what I like to do and I think it makes my, um, you know, my, my particular work stand out um, you know, above you know, just the generic piece of um, analysis, which doesn't add any color or, or add in any effort in this particular area. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're almost done. So look, it's becoming a lot cleaner now, isn't it? If you have a look, if you have a look at this. Okay. 
and we obviously probably want to change this one as well to white okay so that's a lot cleaner now one of the other things that i do because i love um when and i've spoken of this a few times uh over the years is that i i like to think in grids and you can think of everything in here as a grid right and so um let's just have a look at my shapes i'm going to grab a line okay i'm going to add a simple line here to highlight my grid a little bit more than what it maybe is visually just by where I've placed my visualization. Okay, so I'm going to add this here. I'm going to change the color of this as well. I want this line to be totally white. Okay, so you see here that I've, I've sort of created a grid with my background colors. And then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to flip this. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm gonna grid up this area as well. This is a really good technique, a really, really good one that um, can be used really effectively. And it's not difficult, right? Not difficult at all. Okay, then I would maybe change these up a little bit, make the colors a bit more integrated into um, a bit more integrated. So font color, I would turn to sort of white and background color. Maybe we'll go for sort of the blue here, see if that works. Yep, so that kind of works with a little bit more better with the color theme, right? And oh, I've got to fix this one up as well. So I actually don't even want the X axis, I just want the Y. So yeah, that makes that stand out as well. And do I need to update this one as well? Yep, I'll just update this one too. It's a Y axis. Okay, so that's how we get to here. I think what we'll do, there's, there's a few other things that, um, that we could cover here, but I, I feel like we've gone on enough. I've shown you, you know, a lot in today's session and, you know, we are very, very close, if you think about it, to what we had here, right, in this particular demo, okay? Um, so, you know, you have access to this as well. Uh, so, you know, you can um, go through and try to recreate these other things. I'll make sure in the in the chat that there is some videos showcased like how you can get hold of these logos. So this is this is a there's a cool website called Flaticons where, where you can access logos. Um, not not logos, but like, you know, small vectors and images that you could utilize in your reports. That's a good thing to check out. Um, and also you see here that I've, you know, these, these are basically text boxes, these ones here. So, you know, not, not too far removed from just calculating something, uh, just creating a text box like this, right? And so those are some of the improvements there. There's also some other cool enhancements to this particular report. You know, this is actually a dynamic report. So everything changes based on, um, based on what you select here. And so I haven't showcased that here because I didn't think we would have time, but that is, um, I'll also make sure there's a, some links placed into the chat so that you can actually see how that's done also, um, because I think that's a really good trick that you could implement in, in your reports as well. Okay, so hey, let's round off this part of it and I'll just very quickly switch back to me and we'll round off the session. Um, I think we've almost ru we've run out of time as well um, for me to go over some of the some of the great things that um, we've got going on at, at Enterprise DNA. But um, hey, look out for more live streams from me, some more webinars, because you know obviously as we're all stuck indoors, you know this is a good opportunity to to really upskill in in a lot of things um, Power BI related. So you know I'm thinking of ways that I can facilitate that. So so certainly watch out. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, let's just round it off here. Let's just round it off here. Thank, thanks a lot for all your time. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, look look forward to, um, to seeing you uh, on the next time I um, you know stream something or, or run a webinar. Okay, all the very best. Take care. Uh, stay safe out there. See ya.